State Council in Beijing today approved Chief Executive Designate Carrie Lam's choice of principal officials who will help her govern Hong Kong for the next five years. They will assume office July 1st. There are some familiar faces on her team. Six incumbent officials, including the top three officials, Chief Secretary for Administration Matthew Cheung, Financial Secretary Paul Chan, and Justice Secretary Rimsky Yoon will be staying on. Lam also promoted four deputy secretaries to head bureaus and four experienced civil servants to become political appointees. She had earlier expressed the desire to recruit more women, young people, and outside talent to her governing team. But the only outsider is La Chi Kuang, who resigned from the Democratic Party last night, joining as labor and welfare chief. Adam Shu takes a look at the incoming administration. Will Carrie Lam's new governance style be carried out by a team of new faces? As it turned out, Lam will keep the top tier of principal officials. Matthew Chan will remain as chief secretary for administration, Paul Chan as financial secretary, and Rimsky Yun as secretary for justice. Also to stay are secretary for the environment, Wong Kam Sing, secretary for innovation and technology, Nicholas Yang, and secretary for home affairs, Lau Kong Wa. Director of the Chief Executive's Office, Edward Yao, will head the Commerce and Economic Development Bureau. Meanwhile, Under Secretary for Education, Kevin Young, will move one step up to lead the Bureau. And similar promotions for John Lee in the Security Bureau, James Lau in the Financial Services and the Treasury Bureau, and Sylvia Chan in the Food and Health Bureau. Chan will be the only female in Carrie Lam's lineup of top officials. For the rest of the 13 policy bureaus, Frank Chan has been made Secretary for Transport and Housing, Joshua Law, Secretary for the Civil Service, Patrick Nip, Secretary for Constitutional and Mainland Affairs, and Michael Wong will oversee the Development Bureau. Democratic Party founding member Law Chi Kuang will be the only one from outside of the government. He will be Secretary for Labor and Welfare. By design, um, the politically accountable system does not necessarily mean that in the change of term, we need to find new blood. If you define new blood as unfamiliar faces or people who have never joined the government. Some candidates had apparently declined Lam's offer to join her new cabinet, and Lam earlier admitted that the process was a challenge. But she stressed today that she had put together the most desirable team who were on the same page as her when it came to governing philosophy. They all agree with my new style of governance and support the idea that the government should play more active roles. While officials on the fiscal side have no disagreement with my new philosophy of public finance management. Younger people, Lam said, will serve in lower rungs of the government, her revamped central policy unit, as well as various boards and committees under the government. She urged all policy bureaus to work together for the public well-being rather than operate from their own silos. Adam Xu, TVB News. Now let's take a look at the three top officials under Carrie Lam. One of those is Secretary for Justice Rimsky Yoon, who's decided to remain despite rumors that he wanted to leave. Winna Wong reports. Chief Secretary for Administration Matthew Zhang, Financial Secretary Paul Chan, and Secretary for Justice Rimsky Yoon. All three of the current top secretaries are staying on to work in Carrie Lam's administration. For some, the unchanged ensemble may come as a bit of a surprise, since it had long been rumored that Secretary for Justice Rimsky Yoon wanted out. Some are now saying he may only be staying to finish the more tricky issues left over from the previous administration. These include the border control arrangements for the controversial high-speed rail link to Guangzhou. And after that, will he leave? From my perspective, what is important is that as long as I remain the Secretary for Justice, I would uh, do my best to discharge my duty and to handle as uh, many things as I would need to handle, including, of course, the issue of co-location. Questions have also been raised about Yoon's health. Throughout the past term, the justice chief had been hospitalized twice for intestinal issues. There have been suggestions in the media that there are health issues about me. 
but uh, to set the record straight, as I said again, I don't think I have myself said that I have health issues, which would prevent me from discharging duties. The city's future second-in-command, meanwhile, vowed to help Lam with what she's best at, livelihood issues. Zhang had been Secretary for Labor and Welfare for nearly 10 years before he took up his current post in January. I have been working very closely with the Chief, Chief Executive-elect, Mrs. Carrie Lam, for many years. We share the same philosophy on major livelihood issues in relation to population policy, poverty alleviation, elderly care and support for the disadvantaged. The finance chief, meanwhile, said land supply will be a major focus. We will continue to invest in infrastructure. Increasing land supply will continue to be one of our key focus. Responding to accusations from some lawmakers that the new cabinet is second-rate, Matthew Jung insisted that was not the case and said the government wants to maintain good communication with lawmakers. Wen Wang, TVB News. Out of all the newly appointed principal officials, La Chi Kuang stands out. He is to become the city's next secretary for labor and welfare. Not only is he a pan Democrat, he is also the only person coming from outside the current government. Wen Wang has more. La Chi Kuang is a founding member of the Democratic Party. He was the political group's first party secretary. In 1995, he became a member of the Legislative Council, representing the social welfare sector. He stayed in that post for nearly a decade, except from 1997 to 1998. Law is known for his high IQ score of 160 and was often referred to as the brain of the Democratic Party. Social welfare policies are his forte. He aided the Democratic Party in strategy formulation and data analysis during elections. But cracks began to appear over the years when it came to opinions on livelihood issues. In 2012, the government announced the new old age living allowance. Back then, various political groups, including Law's party, wanted anyone aged 70 or above to be eligible for this allowance without having to go through any means test. But in an interview, Law described this demand as a breach of political morality. That's because he felt this would be equivalent to raising the old age allowance, a monthly benefit commonly known as fruit money. He said this would be a toll on government coffers in the long run, and that would crowd out other poverty alleviating measures. The distance seemed to widen further in 2015, during the government's most recent attempt at political reform. Wanting to break the deadlock between authorities and the pan-democrats, Law wrote his party colleagues with suggestions for a third way. He proposed elements such as replacing election committee corporate votes with individual votes. He also came up with a strategy that calls on voters to leave their votes blank if they are unsatisfied with all chief executive candidates. This way, nobody would get enough votes to win, and the election would be rendered invalid. But then DP Chairwoman Emily Lau rejected Law's ideas, saying this would be the same as accepting the government's electoral reform proposal. Law and his soon-to-be boss, Carrie Lam, are both passionate about welfare issues. They worked together when Lam was chairwoman of the Commission on Poverty, of which Law is a member. Wen Wang, TVB News.